Hello, this is Jörg once again from YouTube channel Jörgler66 and today I'm here to do another reading of the book Rulers of Evil. Chapter 19 is the one that we have arrived at. Before we go into chapter 19, I don't want to delay anything, but in the book there is a little chart, a chart that goes over two pages that uh, explains a little bit what happened in all the time of the Generalate, Generalate, I really can't pronounce that word, Generalate of Lorenzo Ricci between 1750 and 1775. What happened in that specific year in the Euro world is one part of the, cha uh, of the chart, what happened in England in that year, and as third point, what happened in America at that point of the year. It starts in 1758 in the Euro world. Lorenzo Ricci was elected the Black Pope. Clement XIII was elected Pope. And John Carroll begins teaching at St. Omer's, which is in Flanders. So we are speaking about the Euro world still. And Pombal from Portugal denounces Jesuits in Portugal. In England in 1758, Benjamin Franklin in London seeking greater British presence in Pennsylvania. King George II obliges by plunging England into the French and Indian Wars. Carroll graduates in civil law from Jesuit College in Paris, arrives in London for more legal studies at the Middle Temple. That is something that you can still visit today within the city of London, that square mile, the Middle Temple, that is where the crown is owned. The Queen is not the owner of the crown, you know, but that's another subject. In America in 1758, colonies were very happy. Haha! <laughs> Seeking greater British presence, yet Sam Evans begins organizing against Great Britain. Gadsden in South Carolina, Harnett in New Car North Carolina, Patrick Henry and Jefferson in Virginia, and Thompson in Philadelphia follow the suit. In 1759, the Jesuits are expelled from Portugal. Voltaire bashes Jesuits in two hit plays and pans, and Ganganelli becomes cardinal under Ritchie's sponsorship in 1759 in the Euro world. In England, in the meantime, George II's grandson, the Prince of Wales, matures under the spiritual direction of Lord Bute. And in America, in 1759, we read that Thompson formalizes Young Junto, a secret club for young men interested in useful arts and sciences, cloned from Franklin's Junto and akin to Sam Adams' Causes Club in Boston. In 1760, the Jesuits are under attack in Spain in the Euro world, and in England, George III takes the throne upon grandfather's debt, and Bute runs the parliament through, quote-unquote, the king's friends, as you remember from the chapter we read. In 1760, in America, the people are happy to be English subjects. Colonists are peacefully ruled by a little pen, ink and paper led by a thread. In 1761, in the Euro world, the Jesuits are condemned in Spain. In England, Bude, virtual head of the British government, chooses mate for George III, Queen Charlotte of Mecklenburg. And in America in 1761, the writs of assistance imposed on colonists by King's friends, John Adams considers this the commencement of the controversy. In 1762, we have the Jesuits condemned by French Parliament. John Carroll transfers to Bruges in Flanders. We have no news from England in 1762, but so we turn to America, and there it says Benjamin Franklin returns to install postal system connecting southern Virginia with eastern uh, New England. In 1763, Febronius publishes State of the Church, calling for reunifica reunification of Protestants with Catholics in states under the papacy's spiritual direction. Yeah, of course. That's exactly what Vatican II is all about. That's exactly what all today is all about. All the so-called politics within the so-called Protestant churches. Protestant? My eye! They don't protest anything. No! Febronius publishes State of the Church calling for reunification of Protestants with Catholics in states under the papacy's spiritual direction. This is exactly what we are living in today, people. 
Okay, 300 a little 300 years later about, but <laughs> who cares? Who cares? They succeeded. They succeeded totally because Protestantism as it was, Protestantism as it should be, is dead at this moment. And we have to resurrect it. 1763 in England, England wins French and Indian wars, but under terms of peace of Paris, negotiated by Lord Bute, hmm, is cut off from any European alliances and made object of colonial represent, rep, resentment. Bute was forced to resign. So England actually isolated itself, especially by this peace in Paris that Lord Bute was responsible for. And we all know who stand behind Lord Bute, right? I mean, this is why I'm reading the chart to you anyway. 1763 in the United States of America, or no, I should say America, the United States, that wasn't existent at that time. So in America, sorry, colonists resent England's grant of land to France under the Peace of Paris. The secret clubs agitate against England. In 1764 in Euroland, Pope, Pope Clement XIII bans Febronius' book. Yeah, cover, blown cover as cover, remember? Pope Clement XIII bans Fibronius book and Louis XV suppresses the Jesuits by royal edict in France. 1764 in England, Bute picks Grenville new prime minister and Grenville increases duties on colonial imports and Carroll leaves England for Maryland. In 1764 in America, Franklin returns to England to lobby for Pennsylvania's becoming a royal colony. Colonists resent Grenville's measures, smuggling increases, and Grenville brings admiralty courts England. Inland. <laughs> Sorry, England. In 1765, in uh, the Euroland, Clement XIII, Pope Clement XIII, authorizes Office of Sacred Heart, a Jesuit cult which holds believers responsible for reparations for the sins of the world, payable through prayers, penances, masses, and social action. Yeah, that reminds me a lot of 2015. The Sacred Heart, a Jesuit cult which holds believers responsible for reparations for the sins of the world. Why does that remind me of 2015? When our beloved Antichrist Pope Francis came to the United States of America and held his speech in front of the United Nations and tell us how responsible we all are for the sins that we do against the world by matter of pollution and by his quote-unquote global warming agenda. If you believe in global warming, do you know that you deny Christ? Do you know that you say that God wasn't possible to create a world that was sustainable for us all? Think about that. God was not in any way or form, uh, in any way or form, short in anything in the creation of this world. Even what man does today, okay, the pollution is there. I do not deny that. But carbon, CO2, is not a gas that heats up global warming. We all breath out CO2. So, when you believe in global warming and you want to stop it, well, just stop breathing. You do the world a service. You know? That's what they want you to believe. God put a perfect world here and this world sustains us all and even ten times the people that we have now on the earth it would sustain if God would allow so many people to live on the earth as many people as God allows to live on the earth as many people he sustains that the elites do not want to sustain these people and that the elites and that Satan which is the elites in another way doesn't want us to survive in this kind of world. 
or wants us to think that we cannot, that we cannot survive in this world. That is a whole other matter. And if you rather believe Satan than God, go your way. Then I have nothing to tell you. But if you believe in the Bible, and if you believe in the sovereign, incorruptible, unfallible God, in the King James 1611 authorized Bible, then you know that global warming is a hoax from the devil. I mean, I don't really want to get into this global hoax thing right now, but just for your information, when I was visiting school in the 70s, and when I was in basic school, they told us that we were heading for a new ice age. That's 40 years back, people. And within less than 40 years, because they are telling this global warming hoax already some years, it is instead of a new ice age that we're going to hit, it's a global warming that we are going to hit. Come on! Come on! Even if you are so ignorant to believe the evolution theory and that the world is millions of years old, and you watch this video from... Um, what was it? Uh... An Unconvenient Truth, you know. Uh, his name escapes me at the second. Al Gore, An Unconvenient Truth. The charts that he used goes over thousands and tens of thousands and even hundreds of thousands and millions of years because, hey, that's how long the world took to develop and blah, 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 blah. And there was a climate change there and there and there and now we go there. So... Everything in that chart is about thousands of years, millions of years, and now all of a sudden, within less than 40 years, we're going from an ice age to global warming? How dumb must one be to swallow that and don't see the agenda that's behind there? Sacred Heart, a Jesuit cult which, which holds believers responsible for reparations for the sins of the world, payable through prayers, penances, masses, and social action. That's exactly what the Pope preached in 2015. Exactly. <laughs> so, make sure, make sure who you're going to listen to. We're still in 1765, and in England, Grenville passes the Stamp Act. Anglican churches requests British cabinet to establish an American bishop. And in America, over in 1765, we read that Carroll arrives in Maryland. The American bishops, uh, bishop scare, quote, trains and habitu hab habituates uh, the colonists to opposition, unquote. Patrick Henry, furious at Stamp Act, cries, No taxation without representation! And Sam Adams convenes Stamp Act co Congress in New York. We turn to 1766. Oh, that's 200 years before I was born. And in the Euroland, we have Pope Clement XIII appoints Jesuit Giovanni Braschi the treasurer of the Apostolic Chamber. <laughs> yeah, and I think we read already what happens to Giovanni Braschi a little bit later and why he was opposed, appointed treasurer of the Apostolic Chamber and why he is Jesuit educated and who is his ruler. And the same year over in England, Grenville falls. The Stamp Act is repeated with Ryder that Parliament has full power to bind colonies. And Townsend takes over as Prime Minister. In America, people are not so happy anymore. The colonies are exuberant over the Stamp Act repeal. In 1767, in Euroland, King Charles III expels the Jesuits from Spain. Everything is working according to Lorenzo Ricci's plan. In England, Townsend Acts place high duties on goods received in America. 
and in America the Townsend Act stimulate colonial productivity. Yeah, the colonies were very productive and they got a lot of money. In 1768, the Euro world, Jesuits were expelled from other Catholic countries. He doesn't even mention them anymore. Doesn't matter. But who is behind the expulsion of the Jesuits? Ask yourself that. In England, the first Encyclopedia Britannica is published. That is very interesting to know. And it would be very interesting to get a copy of the first Encyclopedia Britannica or one of the first prints in the 1800s, as you can see, a 17, uh, 1768, so in the 18th century, from 18th century editions, I mean. Um, because things that are written in there, wow, I guess you can read a lot of stuff that even doesn't so uh, quote unquote exist <laughs> anymore today because they turned it all out. That's an interesting point, 1768. You know, I uh, when I look up dictionary on the internet, I go to Webster's, and um, I go to the Webster's 1828 online edition. You can find that online. A friend of mine over there, I think it was Brett who told me that sometime, he uh, bought it for, I don't know, 40 or $60. Dollars. Uh, dollars. Sorry, Federal Reserve notes, uh, including shipping. He paid about 100 bucks or something. He's got it in his hand. I don't have it only on the internet, but it's interesting when you do a word search on these dictionaries, what they come sometimes up with, what kind of explanation, and uh, when you look up a modern dictionary, what kind of explanation they give you on that. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, where was I? Uh, 1768, uh, United States, now that's still not the case, but America. The productivity and self-support help raise comfort level of separation and independence among colonists. Yeah, you know, first you gotta make money, you gotta be rich, you gotta be happy, and then you go to war to, de to defend all that, what you think is worth defending. That's nothing what the Bible says, but that's what people think, you know. Productivity and self-support help raise comfort level of separation and independence among colonists. I agree with Tupper Saucy when he writes this here. The colonies were at that moment very productive and people got rich and people felt good. And they had to fear somebody will take that away. Well, they were right. <laughs> they only didn't see where it came from. It was the same old devil as it was before. It was Rome, not England, that was right after your money. And Rome got it all, certainly today, in 2015. Now, 1768 for the second time, so maybe that's a little printing error, and he means 1769. Anyway, the day before meeting with European powers to discuss the dissolution of the Jesuits, this is what happened in Euroworld at that year, Pope Clement XIII dies suddenly, and Ganganelli is elected Clement XIV, and Rothschild of Rothschild appointed the guardian of Vatican treasury, John Carroll, ordained a Jesuit. All this happened in 1768 or 1769. I take this as a printing error because there's no need to write two times 1768. In England, where well, you can look up the original Encyclopedia Britannica 1768, maybe it's in there. <laughs> Surely in the later edition. No, it's only in the Encyclopedia Judaica. Anyway, 1769, I continue here. Townsend Act in England. Townsend Acts costing more to enforce than revenue returns. So the English finally woke up. Hey, we are taxing and it costs more money to enforce to get that money than we make of it. So maybe we shouldn't do it. Benjamin Franklin now representing Pennsylvania, Georgia and New Jersey and London. And in America, over, we have Thompson opens a rum distillery near Philadelphia. Yeah. Rum. Alcohol. What's, what's it all about? Huh? Rum, tabac, tea, 
coffee, all drugs that God told us not to use. <laughs> did you did you recognize that for once? What's it all about? Huh? You had your tea war and tea is a stimulating drink. Like coffee. Like cigarettes, tobacco, like alcohol, rum, whiskey, whatever, wine, port wine, whatever. All things the Bible tells us to lay a wave of, to not lay our hands on. And Thompson opens a rum distillery near Philadelphia. Well, okay. Now we go to 1770, and for once in the Euro world, we have no thing happening but over there in England, of course because that's also in Euroland. In England, Franklin adds Massachusetts to list, making him chief spokesman for American interests in England. And the Townshand Acts repealed. Also in 1770, in America, the Redcoats fire into an angry Boston crowd. The Boston Massacre becomes the symbol of British tyranny. Do you remember the Boston Massacre? When the Redcoats fired into an angry Boston crowd, and that Boston crowd, all they did were they were throwing snowballs. Snowballs! And the answer was cannon fire. Or gunfire, let's say. Not cannon fire, gunfire. Yeah. That's paying back with the same force, right? Get a snowball hitting your face or wherever, and you shot the guy. <sighs> That's the way that you know that all these things are controlled from the top. In 1771, in Euroland, we read that John Carroll begins the tour of Europe with Charles Thornton, a very interesting tour that we read about, and you remember in the way when they met Rothschild during this tour. Also in 1771 we read in America on anniversary of the Boston Massacre Sam Adams calls for action and solidarity against England. Now we have defined our enemy. England is the enemy and we have to go against England and we have to separate from England. A Protestant country at that time still. We have to separate from it. And the people didn't see the deception they were led into. In 1772 in Euroland, General Ritchie causes Emiot's Sun Tzu to be published in Paris, disclosing his strategy for bringing America under Rome's dominion. Well, everything I've been talking to so far. <laughs> In England in 1772 and in America in 1772, we don't have any action that Tapa Saucy notes down here. But we go to the next year in 1773 and read in Euroworld. After making, <coughs> excuse me, after making Giovanni Brasci cardinal, Clement XIV dissolves the Jesuits on July 21st. On August 17th. Lorenzo Ricci is taken to English College for meetings with John Mattingly of Maryland, Brashi and others, perhaps including East India Company. September 22nd, Ricci is taken to Castle St. Angelo as Tea Act product heads for Boston. So Ricci is taken into quote unquote captivity in Castle St. Angelo. And we know, and we probably read that later on in this book, as we already have. I, I don't know if we read this, or it was an hour of the truth that we discussed this. That Lorenzo Ricci, when, when in, when in uh, so-called prison in Castel San Angelo, they, you know they have a tunnel, uh, a direct connection to the Vatican, to St. Billicus, to St. Peter's. <clears throat> and he was not uh, captured there. You know, He was the initiator of it all, and uh, what happens with Lorenzo Ricci even after 1775, what they write here? Um, the book Rulers of Evil is very precise in this, and this is one of the few sources that you can get where you can really read about 
the professor. Remember that what I'm telling you right now. The professor. Remember the professor. And his important role in the founding of the United States of America in 1776. Well, something I'm just going to give you a little stop word right now and you can keep it and then you go into that a little bit later. So, 1773, right? That was Euroland. What happened over there in England in 1773 is in May, Parliament passes the Tea Act proposed by East India Company. John Carroll arrives at Water Castle in Wiltshire in England to serve as chaplain for the Arundels. And in America, we have Carroll runs his first citizen opinion chapter. So this is Charles Carroll that we are talking about here. Runs his first citizen opinion paper. You know, we've read about that first citizen, second citizen, you know. That quarrel they had there. And Thompson's group turns back Tea Act, product meant for Philadelphia. Disguised Freemasons stage the Boston Tea Party on December 16th. Disguised Freemasons. Yeah. Blamed it even on the Indians. You know, Native Americans. Pathetic. In 1774 in Euroland we read that Pope Clement XIV dies. Yeah. A very agonizing death that he died. And I got the quote right here that Pope Clement said. Alas, I knew they would poison me, but I did not expect to die in so slow and cruel a manner. They, the Jesuits, that was Pope Clement the Fourteenth, who had quote-unquote forever abolished the Jesuit order in 1773 find that quite an interesting quote. You know, it took him more than a year to die from that poison. So, the Jesuits are really cruel when they use that stuff, and they are the masters of poison. So, 1774, Pope Clement XIV dieth. Church gives appearance of serious disability. Lorenzo Ricci accesses Vatican via tunnel from St. Angelo for meetings with Cardinal Brasci who runs the Holy See during long conclave to elect successor. And don't forget, Cardinal Brasci was a child of Jesuit education. In England in 1774 we read Parliament enacts the Intolerable Acts, ostensibly to punish the colonies for Tea Party offence, but meant to drive them to separation. George III writes Lord North, quote, the die is cast. The colonies must either triumph or submit. Unquote. And Tom Paine boards the ship for America with letter of introduction from Benjamin Franklin. John Carroll also departs for America. Meanwhile, 1774 in America, the efforts of Thompson results in First Continental Congress at Philadelphia in September with Thompson serving as perpetual secretary for the next 15 years. Charles Carroll attends First Congress as quote-unquote unofficial consultant to Maryland delegation. Mifflin's house scene of secret meetings between the Carrolls and Patriot leaders. Charles Carroll and Thompson manufacture explosives and weaponry. 1775, here we come back to the long enclave, you know, that is the time period between the one pope not being on post anymore and the other pope not yet elected. 143 days, the long enclave elects finally Giovanni Brasci, the pope who, all the time with Lorenzo Ricci, <laughs> conducted the financial affairs of the Holy See. <laughs> and he takes the name Pope Pius VI. Lorenzo Ricci, quote-unquote, dies in Castel Sant'Angelo on November 24th. Yeah. Yeah. Dies. 
very convenient to die at that moment, you know, because you have worked all your general lit up, up to one specific point to do something in history, and just before that happens, ah, you die. What a shame. <laughs> you can believe that. I don't believe that, and that is probably why chapter 19 is going to be very interesting. But, you know, I'm not going into that today. That's Otherwise, this little chart reading is just too long with all my ranting on here. But I love it. I love the book. I love to go through all this stuff. Okay, so Lorenzo Ricci, quote-unquote, dies in Castel Sant'Angelo on November 24th. In the meanwhile, 1775 in England, George III ignores the olive branch petition offered by Congress. And in America in 1775, on April 19th, the Redcoats fire on Americans in response to an unseen shootist at Lexington Green, near Concord Bridge. And go back into the book and understand that this was a false flag. <laughs> yeah, shots heard miles away. And so on and so on. We come to 1776 and we come to Euroland. John and Charles Carroll join Congressional Mission to Canada and secure Quebec's neutrality in the coming war. England in 1776, according to Tupper Saucy's writing in this chart, is quiet, but in America we have Payne's Common Sense is published. Common Sense. And the Declaration of Independence resolved on July 2nd, 1776. This ends the reading of the chart that precedes Chapter 18, The Death and Resurrection of Lorenzo Ricci in the book Rulers of Evil. I will read the chapter Rulers of Evil 19 apart from this video, because it's already 32 minutes and it's probably better. To do that another time but i gave you a little foretaste of what's to come okay hope you enjoyed it and whenever you have any questions or comments please leave them in the description uh, in the description box in the comment section under the video and uh, until next time god bless you and bye bye